Terry, I'm gonna fire up the grill. Can you please get the pico de gallo going? Please, por favor. Put some extra serrano in there too. Por favor. Oh my God. Oh. oh my God, this thing hasn't been cleaned since the last time I was here. Son of a gun. Hey, what's up my barbecue lover friends? We're up here in Austin, Texas. We're recording some branded content. I've been wanting to make a video about how to clean a kettle or a barbecue pit in general for quite some time. Since we're doing this branded content, I want my grill to look extra nice. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the cleaning process on my son's Weber kettle grill. If you've been following me for some time, you know that I'm somewhat fanatical about cleaning my grill grates and my grills in general. One of the reasons I like a clean grill is because I want clean food. That's a food safety thing for me. I used to own a restaurant, so I went through the schools about how important it is to have good clean food without any soot, without any extra ashes. Things fall down into the fire, it turns into ash. Sometimes it's gooey, the grease tends to stick to the sides. So I like to scrape that grease off so you don't get any of those off odors and off smells onto your barbecue meats. You want your barbecue meat to taste like good, delicious and clean barbecue meats. Now I cooked on this pit about a year ago. My son's used it a couple of times since then. I can assure you, probably has not been cleaned since the last time I was here. Of course, these young people live very busy lifestyles, so sometimes they just don't think it's important or they don't think they have time. Today I'm here to record a video, and I do have time, so I'm gonna clean my grills because I like good clean grills. So I'm gonna clean it all up. I see there's an onion down there too that got left there, so we're gonna take all that out. Let me walk you guys through the process of how I like to clean my Weber kettles. All right, now it doesn't take a lot to clean a Weber kettle grill. This one's gonna be fairly easy. It's anywhere from five to 10 minutes maybe. All you need is a chimney, some gloves, mainly to keep your hands clean so that when you're preparing your meats, you're not having to wash all that grease and suit off of your hands. And at home, I keep a uh, plastic uh, putty knife that I use to scrape the sides of the grill. Today, I don't have that. So I'm just gonna use the edge of a cardboard box. This works really fine. And we're also gonna need some good heavy duty foil. You need a box to dump the ashes in and of course the trash can. Now another very important safety thing, super important, make sure that this is an old fire, not yesterday's or this morning's. You wanna make sure that thing's four or five days gone, that it's completely turned off. Because believe it or not, a lot of those coals stay lit for a very, very long time. Sometimes it's a couple of days if you have a little bit of airflow in there. So make sure it's an old fire, make sure your fire is completely extinguished before you start cleaning your grill. Super important for safety. Now when I get started cleaning my Weber kettle grills, I like to use a chimney first to hold the lid just so that the lid doesn't get in the way. That sets to the side, gets it out of the way. I'm gonna put on some gloves. The, the kettle has two handles here. I like to hang one on the side here and uh, get the grate out of the way. And if it's at all possible, it gets a little dusty, so make sure you're not wearing your Sunday's best. I'm just gonna grab some of these, put them in the box. Here's that old onion, that goes in there. If you don't wanna breathe a bunch of uh, charcoal dust, put a little mask on. I'm so used to it, it doesn't really bother me. Another thing that works really good, and I have one at home, I don't have one here, is I have a very big ice scoop. Um, you can get it down here and scoop up some of this old charcoal or ashes and dump it into your trash can or into your box, whatever you're gonna to use to dispose of the charcoal. We've got enough of this out where we can just pull this whole grate out. You wanna dump all your ashes in here, all your old briquettes and ashes. And now we're gonna use the built-in slider that you use to slide the veins that are down in the bottom of the Weber kettle. Before I do that, I am gonna scrape some more of these bigger, some of these bigger leftover briquettes in here. Sometimes they get stuck in the veins and it will cause an issue with the vein getting stuck and it will bend the veins and then you won't be able to control your airflow quite as well. So you want to get as much of the big chunks out as you possibly can. Take these handles on the Weber kettle and slide these veins back and forth. Get as much as you can out and scrape some of this ash down there if it doesn't all go down. Give it a couple of swishes back and forth. I like to get the edges like this too. All right, we're ready to uh, put our grate back in here. But before we do, we're gonna remove the ash can down underneath. This has a couple of little grips. You squeeze them and down it goes. And there, my friends, you see all the excess ash that we accumulated down on the bottom. All you're gonna do is dump it right here into the box here. We've got our grate. We're gonna put the grate back. Now we're gonna clean this grate. Pretty much I'm just gonna use the uh, grill brush. And here's a pro tip a step that I forgot. 
you want to do this first before you clean out the bottom. So make sure you add that step later. <laughs> All right, let's clean the grill. Spin it around. I like to go with the grill first. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go across the grill also just because I think it gets all that little extra stuff out of the way. Give it a couple of taps and you're done. All right, now here's one more thing I like to do after the grill brush. There's always, again, that safety thing. Every once in a while, you might get a little metal bristle from the brush that stays on the grate. So I like to take a piece of foil, roll it into a ball, and give it one more scrape. Now you can do this right now while the grill's cold or you can do it after the grill's hot as well. It's a little easier when the grill is cold. Basically the foil acts like a rough sandpaper. It really cleans the grill very, very well. You can see here where the metal's starting to shine through there. You want a nice clean grate. And you'll see here how the little ridges form from the grate. So you want to use those to your advantage and just kind of move it along, scrape it really, really good. And once in a while, turn it the other way. Give it one more little cleaning. And friend, we are ready to go. Dump that in the trash. You want to get rid of those, get them out of the way. Edit that, boom. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to clean the outside. I've got dust and dirt and all kinds of stuff on there, so it's really just a snap to do that. Just like that. All right, let's give this a little wipe down. I usually like to use a little soap and water. And this is just light dust, so I didn't really need to get the gloves on for that, but like this grease here on top, you probably better off using a little soap and warm water. I'm gonna wipe it as good as I can, make it look nice. And there's always a little bit of grease here on the handles, just from handling the grill and the grates and things like that. So I like to get all of that off. I like to give it a nice little wipe all the way around, make it look nice. All right, my friends, one more thing. I'm gonna give it the dry off, just to make it look extra pretty. All right, now it's time to light the fire and it'll be one more step to cleaning the grill. All right, we're on to the last phase of cleaning the Weber kettle. We've already scraped and cleaned our grill, but now I want to get it nice and hot. I'm going to give it a nice little wipe with an onion just to disinfect it and make sure it's nice, clean, and sanitary. I've choked the airflow down about halfway down. I'm only, I only have a little bit open on the bottom, maybe about a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch. I want to slow the temperature down just for a little while. I just want that grate to get hot so I can finish the cleaning process. And if we're cooking steaks like we are today, then I'm going to open it all back up because I want a nice, hot fire for my steaks. So I'm gonna set my lid down right here. And what I like to do is just get a nice heavy duty paper towel, fold it over a couple of times. One more time, I'm gonna give it a wipe. You can use some oil if you want. You don't have to, but you see that suit right there? I don't like that on my food or on my barbecued meats. So I'm gonna fold it over, wipe it one more time. Now also, I have a dual zone setup so I can cook meat on this side or on this side, a little indirect heat. I'm gonna rotate it around the other side because I want this side to be just as hot as well. I'm probably a little more excessive clean than most people when it comes to barbecue grills, but that's just me. That's the way I like my grills. And we have one more step we're gonna do for y'all. I like to use an onion to clean my grate. So I like to cut across the top here in a couple of different directions. And that helps the onion dig into the grates a little bit deeper and a little bit better. So you wanna lay that on there, get your tongs and just kind of dig them in a little bit. And you can hear that sizzle. Barely, but you can hear it. Then I'm gonna wipe it one more time. Another thing that happens when you score the bottom of the onion the way I just did, some of those little pieces drop into the fire. That's an awesome flavor too. Now here's a little known pro tip. If you have too much fire, if it's super hot, it's getting away from you. Some people like to spritz the fire with beer or with water or whatever. Onions are probably 95% water. You can always dice up the onion, throw it on your fire, and it will actually slow your fire down. And that's pretty much it, friends. We are ready to cook. Here's another thing that I like to do, and I love these grates because they have that extra little hinge there. And uh, so you open that up, drop the onion in there. We're ready to cook. All right, friends, that's how you clean the Weber Kettle Grill. Appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. All right, if you're interested in our APC barbecue rubs, you can go to pitmaster.us and select the ones you like there. 
try all three. I guarantee you're gonna love them. If you wanna up your barbecue game, go to pitmasterclass.us. We enjoyed recording this video for you guys. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Keep the smoke light, make it work, and we'll see you at the next one. Boom! Let's start cooking. Hey, hey, quit licking my grill. Quit licking my grill. And every once in a while, I'll use my elbows. So I gotta wipe that off too. <laughs> ah!